Science Attica feels rejuvenated as a result of a significant package of updates. There are fresher looks, a more modern cabin, more frugal engines and stronger standards of safety. Plus, this compact mid-sized SUV remains dynamically adept in a way few rivals can match. Few cars can claim to have redefined their market segment, but we think this is one of them, say it's Attica. It's a mid-sized SUV, as you can see, but it's one of the smaller Qashqai-sized ones, and it completely redefined the way a car of this kind should drive at its original launch in 2016. This updated Attica doesn't feature any dynamic changes, but then it didn't really need any. Uh, you wouldn't expect a relatively affordable mid-sized family SUV of this kind to be very good to drive. But as you'll discover when you hit a few twisty roads in this Seat, a pleasant surprise is in store with this one. Drive at seven or eight tenths, and there's actually pretty much no difference between the dynamic responses that you'll get from this Attica and from those of the Leon hatchback that it's based on. Only when you really push push on more aggressively than an average owner ever would, do you realize the limitations of this model's high stance and the relatively basic torsion beam suspension system which comes fitted to most models. Ultimately though, what's been achieved here continues to impress us and it's all proof that relatively lightweight, a simple, firmly structured chassis and fearsome electric power steering can be enough in the hands of the right engineers to create a confident and engaging package. The engines help too. The mainstream range is built primarily around two petrol units, an improved one litre TSI power plant with 115 PS and the preferable 1.5 litre TSI Evo engine with 150 PS that more customers are likely to want. Uh, that's the one that we're trying here. With this larger engine, if you stick with the manual gearbox rather than the optional DSG automatic transmission, the WLTP stats suggest that up to 45.6 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and up to 142 grams per kilometer of CO2 are possible. There are no electrified petrol options, so if you want to do better, you'll need the brand's latest two liter diesel power plant. It is cleaner and more frugal than before, and it's offered in 115 PS and 150 PS forms. Mainstream Atticas, as before, are primarily front-driven. Seat's four-drive all-wheel drive system is still reserved for the pricier models. Uh, you will get that 4x4 option with the top uh, 2 liter TDI 150 PS diesel unit and all-wheel drive traction is mandatory on the two performance-orientated flagship petrol versions, uh, both of which use the usual VW Group 2.0-litre TSI petrol turbo engine. Uh, choose that either in 190 PS form or if you go for the fastest Cupra variant in an extremely rapid 300 PS guise. This Attica's designer, Alejandro Metanero Romanos, uh, says that this is a car that could only have been created in Barcelona. Well, perhaps, but what's important is that this Seat remains a decently good-looking thing. Uh, it's improved in this facelifted guise by a front grille that now makes much more of a statement and is flanked by full LED headlamps, and they're framed by a more distinctive daytime running light graphic. It's a bit different at the back, too, where the Attica gains full LED tail lamps that on top variants feature trendy sweeping indicators. Across the range with this facelifted model the exhaust covers are different and as with the other recent Seat designs the model name is embossed in an italicized handwriting style. Time to take a seat inside. Now, when we first tested this model back in 2016, uh, we commented that we'd like to have seen the Spanish maker give this car's cabin a more unique and fashionable feel. So, is that what's been served up by this revised version? Possibly not, but it is significantly improved. It feels a little sportier behind the wheel than your average family mid-sized SUV. The red illuminated dial needles, the grippier side seat bolsters, uh, the start button uh, that pulses red like a heartbeat, all of that makes a difference. And the big change here though is a step forward in media connectivity, which is evidenced by this larger central infotainment screen, which on most models is gonna be 9.2 inches in size. Uh, the improved graphics allow 
users to select a split screen that will enable you to, for example, uh, display navigation, audio and phone settings all at the same time. And key features include an embedded eSIM, which means that the Attica will never lose its connection to the digital world. Other cabin changes include a redesigned and freshly upholstered four-spoke steering wheel, uh, plus smarter stitched door panels, and the previous uh, rather sombre atmosphere is lifted by matte finish surrounds for the air vents, uh, for the gear lever, and for the climate controls and the infotainment system. Uh, the very priciest models get a 10.25-inch instrument binnacle screen, and as before, the driving position is quite commanding, and build quality seems robust too and there's plenty of space to put things. Let's take a seat in the rear. Now the rear doors are a good size and they open wide enough to make access easy. Plus as with all mid-sized SUVs of this kind a higher roof line than you'll get on a comparably priced Focus or Leon sized hatch means that it's easy to reach in and strap kids into their child seats. Once inside, you'll find another thing that might sell you this car over a conventional family hatch, slightly better standards of rear seat room. Now, in truth, there isn't really any more space here than you get in a Leon, but the high roof line certainly makes it feel more spacious. And the way it's all been uh, packaged gives the impression that you could take three adults back here if need be, and that's something that would usually be a bit of a squash in a Focus class model. Out back there's a decently sized 510 litre boot which is a full 130 litres bigger than you'll get in a conventional Leon hatchback and this space can be extended to as much as 1604 litres if you push forward these split folding rear seat backs. If you didn't already want an Attica, then there's nothing added as part of this mid-term update that would radically reposition this car in your thinking. But if you were approaching the purchase of one of the smaller volume brand mid-sized SUVs with an open mind and you tried the improved version of this Seat, then we think you'd like what you'd found. Uh, this Attica now feels like an up-to-the-minute crossover rather than one launched half a decade ago. Now that's the object of any facelift, but not all of them achieve that goal. The engine changes are probably most significant with greater economy and lower emissions for the base petrol and diesel units that most Attica buyers will want. But we think this car's biggest selling point will continue to be something that really hasn't been affected one jot by this update, driving dynamics. This is still that rarest of things, a car of this kind that's great to drive. Long may that continue.